This is the AGM-65 Maverick air-to-ground missile. Designed by Hughes Missile Systems, now Raytheon, it is a fire-and-forget air-launch-guided missile that has many variants, with many still in service around the world. Renowned for its reliability and accuracy, the Maverick missile was made to replace the underperforming AGM-12 bullpup from its Southeast Asia conflict, Vietnam, and it was also made to penetrate some tough ground targets such as tanks, personnel carriers, so on and so forth, even small boats and large ships. So stick around because we're going to be going over what makes the AGM-65 so powerful. But first, thank you for 1,500 subscribers. Here's to more in the future, and if you want to see more videos like this and you're new to the channel, subscribe because I've got a lot more in the works. With that being said, on to the video. In December of 1962, the XAGM-65 prototype would score a direct hit on a test target, and full production began in 1972. The Maverick saw extensive action during Operation Desert Storm and proved its worth by destroying many Iraqi tanks. The aircraft launching the majority of these was the A-10A. Because they didn't have targeting pods at the time, they would use the Maverick missile as a makeshift targeting pod. This beast of a missile can reach supersonic speeds with its Thiokol solid propellant rocket motor. This has been upgraded in future units and we will talk about those soon. This motor gives it a range of approximately 12 to 17 miles. This makes it quite useful in taking out short-ranged air defenses. Depending on the variant, the Maverick's warhead consists of a 125-pound shaped charge or a 300-pound penetrating blast fragmentation warhead. Now that shaped charge is no joke. Just look what happened to this tank. And now for the fun part. There's many ways to guide the Maverick to a target. And while we talk about the guidance, let's talk about the AGM-65 family. It has 11 variants that range through their letter designations, A through K. The A variant was the first to be put in service, and it did pretty well with its shape charge warhead. The only real complaint was the weapon seeker. Unlike a television guided missile, the Maverick can't be controlled mid-flight. It is completely fire and forget. The missile when mounted on the rail relays an image to the screens in the cockpit when the screens are set to the correct mode. And the complaint was that this live image had no zoom, but it would be corrected in the AGM-65B, giving it magnifying optics. Both the A and B had electro-optical contrast seekers, and these were not infrared seekers like on the AIM-9 Sidewinder, so you could not use this at night. They would look for the contrast of the target, so if the target was bright enough and didn't blend in with the background, it would have a good chance of hitting that target. Both the A and B Maverick feature shaped charge warheads. The AGM-65C was going to be a laser guided missile for the Marines, but it was cancelled, so we'll talk about the AGM-65D. Fielded in 1983, it was the first Maverick with an imaging infrared seeker, giving it the ability to engage targets at night. This is the same seeker that was used on the AGM-84H Slam Cruise Missile, a Harpoon Missile variant, and I've got a video about that missile. Check it out after this. The Mav-D has an upgraded Thiokol rocket motor, which produces less smoke, and this new rocket motor would transition to future Mavericks as well, and some of those future Mavericks wouldn't feature a Thiokol rocket motor, but an Aerojet rocket motor. Enough about rockets, you are now one with the Maverick. Take a look at the giant crosshairs. In order for the Maverick to acquire a target, the pilot must move the seeker to said target, and it has to be in the center of the crosshairs, obviously, and this is called slewing. Once it's slewed to the target, the crosshairs should slightly close on the target and begin to shake around. Just like the growl of a sidewinder, this shaking crosshair lets the pilot know it's ready to be launched. And once launched, the screen goes blank for a second and it should switch to the other missile seeker automatically. Moving on to the AGM-65 F and G, they're almost identical to each other, both featuring infrared seekers and a penetrating blast fragmentation warhead. The F was designed for the US Navy because attacking a small boat with a harpoon would be overkill. It has an upgraded seeker from the Maverick D, allowing the missile to lock onto large ships. And the G just had some software modifications to allow it to track large targets. We'll get to the AGM-65E in a second, but for now, the AGM-65H diverts back to a shaped charge warhead, but it has a new seeker. The D Maverick was used in Desert Storm, but it had a problem. 
a hot desert surface coupled with a hot tank doesn't mix well, so the missile would have trouble locking on. This learnt lesson would see a more modern seeker using something called a charged couple device, giving it more reliable locking range and locking in general. The only takeaway is it can't be used at night. The AGM-65J is the Navy's AGM-65F, but with a CCD seeker. Can't find much about it, so here's to the AGM-65K. Same seeker, but it's going back to a blast frag warhead. And last, but not least, the AGM-65E. Instead of a camera seeker, it's special. It's the laser guided weapon, with a penetrating blast frag warhead, making it pretty useful for close air support. It is a lock on before launch seeker, and it can only be launched with a laser lock. If not, it won't launch as a safety. Other aircraft or ground units with a laser can guide the Maverick E as well. All right, I hear you barking, big dog. With those infrared seekers, can this be used against an airborne aircraft? In theory, yes, but it depends on a lot of factors. A slow moving helicopter, maybe. A jet, maybe not. Okay, let's run this weapon through a scenario. Today our F-16s are on a mission to destroy some dug-in tanks at night. They are armed with four AGM-65D infrared Mavericks, mounted on a triple launch rack. Three Mavericks can be mounted on these racks, but it's restricted to two on the F-16 due to the inward one burning part of the elevator. The general location of the tanks are known, and it has been put into the aircraft's navigation system. The Maverick site can be slaved to the nav system of the aircraft in a pre-planned mode of the Maverick, but it can also be used in its visual mode. With the tank in the crosshairs, the Maverick has a valid lock. Missile away. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you might like the AIM 120 AMRAM video. But before you go, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to not miss out. Hope to see you then. Stay safe.